previously on Kville. Who are you, Carl? When the jail flooded, and I escaped, and I promised myself, I said, you know what, if you get a second chance, then you're changing your life. So I joined the army, laid low for a little while. Nobody asked me any questions. Deep down inside, if you're still a criminal, I will take you down. Trevor. Trevor. Trevor Cobb. Come on, man, shake it off. Oh. I was just trying to get some sleep. Man. So was I, man. That's what happens. People went up all night. You all right? Yeah, we just got off patrol a half hour ago, man. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. We had a jailbreak over at OPP. So say hello to overtime. Three inmates just run loose over an hour now. Chief's rounding up a posse and we're on point, man. So come on. Copy is broken, so everybody get a good look at the board. They believe that the escapees are on foot in Jefferson's 4th District. We are to deploy at West Esplanade and Bonneville to assist Terrence DeVille's men with their dragnet. This is Tim Dunleavy, six foot one, 29 years old. Christopher Green, 33, 210 pounds, under six. He's not gonna be moving too fast. And Tyler Am Singer, 36, 5'11", 185 pounds. This one's a federal felon, but all three are to be considered armed and dangerous. My condolences to y'all who thought your shift was over, but Chief Lewis has called upon all the districts to help those nice boys in the criminal sheriff's office recover their runaways. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. These guys aren't gonna catch themselves. The sooner they get back in prison, the sooner we get back in bed. Dream last night when we busted out of here. Maybe we should. Shut up, Trev. The car's a hit. So what if they do? Can't throw you in the hole for dreaming about it, son. Talk to you for a second. Put in Tabasco? And you're open? Tabasco? Yeah. I'm a black man. I use hot sauce. <laughs> wow! Mm, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Marlon. Hey, Marlon. Ooh. Marlon. Let me talk to you for a second. It's about our assignment. I knew it. I knew this was gonna come back to bite me. OPP is where you spent your time. Hold on a uh, second. And now you're gonna tell me that one of those guys is your best friend and you can't bring yourself to bust him. It's not about me, okay? And I don't know who these guys are. I just know there's a better way to track them is all. So why don't you just shut up and hear me out? A three-man breakout doesn't happen by chance. It takes months of planning. And usually there's help from the outside, someone you trust, who can get you out of the city clean in two hours. If we don't get them by then, they're as good as gone. What is this, jailhouse wisdom? Up there, but don't drop the soap? I know what I'm talking about, Boulay. One of those inmates has got a contact. And if I had to guess, I'd probably say it's the bank robber. Damn singer. Mm -hmm. He's probably got a whole bunch of ex-partners that we can look up. We find the contact and we find the cons. It's a much better plan than let's search Jefferson Parish. That'll take a week. This'll take an hour. What guys? You're good, I need you to search and clear those buildings. Why, have there been civilian sightings? I think intelligence as you need it. Right now, I need you to start on it. <laughs> okay, that's what you need. I need to do my job, which doesn't include taking orders from prison guards. Take it easy, all right? You know, this guy works for me. I don't care. Well, you should care, because I'm in charge of this manhunt. Now, you will follow my command, or I'll have Terrence DeVille call your cabinet and have you oh. pulled. Oh, so you're gonna get your daddy to beat up my daddy? Please, these buildings are family homes. It's six o'clock in the morning. I'm not gonna door ram every house on the block. I think we'll knock first. Come on, you boy. Yeah, you gonna knock first. Oh, 
I can't wait to explain this to Emory. Now, why were you boys knocking on doors halfway across town from where you're supposed to be? Well, Cap, see, Cobb tapped into a special prisoner power to get into the mind of a fugitive and become one with evil. Bulay, if anyone's inside, you just made sure they know we're coming. Oh, well, you know, the last two didn't know about that cop. They were still asleep. So that's two strikes against you, partner. NOPD. Open up. Wanta, wanta contra. Hold on. What do you want? We're looking for Freddy Leone. He's at work. Can I give him a message? Strike three. We're looking for his friend, Ty Amsinger, who used to rob banks with. No, no, no. Freddy never robbed no banks. Those were all lies. And if you're looking for Ty Amsinger, he's in prison. He just broke out a couple hours ago. Look, Ty knows all types of bad people. Peor que un criminal, like Val Chester and Robbie Simon. So why don't you two go bother them? We were just at their houses, and they were in bed, like most people at this hour. Well, Freddy works the early shift. He starts at 3 a.m. What does he work? He's a bag handler at Louis Armstrong. The airport? How the hell do you get to the airport? Like I said, Cap, sometimes you got to think like a criminal. Holy, me vas a cepillar. Slow down. What are you trying to do? Lady, please shut up. I didn't do nothing. And you're going to continue to do nothing while you sit back there. Like, not tip off your husband that we're coming. You were supposed to be aiding with the search party? Who told you to put on your detective hats? We called ahead. Red Leon's clocked in, but no one can find him. He's not on the tarmac, he's not answering his cell phone, and his supervisor hasn't seen him in two hours. You think he's moving our guys out on a plane? Then you will get him past the roadblock. <sighs> All right. I'll break a couple of units off that are nearby. But I don't want this to blow up without confirmation. We're not shutting down any flights. Better be right about this. You got doubts, pull over and let me drive. I'll get us there faster. And there's no way this ramp rat is going to sneak three grown men into a baggage compartment. They got fake passports, plane tickets. They're gonna board as passengers. Who? The James Bond triplets? Man, you've been watching too much Mission Impossible. Fake passports. They're either flying out or they're driving out. Why go to the airport to get a car, huh? I just thought of a reason. Long-term valet. I thought of it first. Ah! Shut up!
Swan. Hey, Jim. Files for your fugies. You could have faxed these over, you know. I'm all about the personal touch. Plus, I hear Terrence DeVille's coming over to pick up his prisoners. Uh, prisoner. M. Singh has been shipped back to OPP for medical treatment. And I hardly believe that uh, Terrence DeVille is going to come over here in person. That'd be like the mayor stopping by to send me on patrol. Cap, we got Dan Levy's car. He dumped it. Metairie. Where'd you get the money? The money was Tim's. Freddie's Tyler's boy. But he wouldn't even help unless he was getting paid. Chris, we found 25 large in each of those money bags. Now, that ain't money. That's money. Tim's rich. I got a better question. OPP is downtown. Freddie Leon said he picked him up in Canada. That means the three of you had to hoof it on foot in their orange jumpers three quarters across New Orleans and Jefferson Parish just to get in a car near the airport where they were going anyway. Now, how in the hell that happened? Why'd you do it, Chris? Chris? You don't have to do this right now. You don't want to. Oh, yes, he does. And you need to be on the other side of that mirror. Man, I just wanted to see my family. I swear. My daughter don't even know me. My wife won't bring her by. Man, that's all. That's okay. all it was. I don't have to explain. I'm taking you back with me now. The hell are you are? Try to leave me, kid. That's my property in that room, not yours. Your what? Property. He's a ward of Orleans Penitentiary. No, not until we're done with that. What the hell is going on here? It's all right, boss. He's just a little lost, his own. I forgot whose house he's in. If you hadn't fumbled the capture, I wouldn't have to be in here. Hey, 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 why don't you do everyone a favor and shut up? Yeah, memory. Ted DeVille. Don Lewis says you're a good man. Real police. I've certainly heard a lot about you, sir. Okay. We'll leave the good parts. <laughs> I want to thank you for bringing my men back alive, even if you did have to shoot one of them. There's one still out there, sir, and the trail is hot. Oh, well, then let's not slow you down. I'm just here to collect my prisoner, make sure he's all right, and get him back home. Okay. And my men just have a couple more questions for Green, pertaining to the manhunt. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. They can talk to both Amzinger and Green. After Amzinger gets patched up, and both he and Green get reprocessed. We're on a time crunch here, sir. So is he. If he doesn't clock in Chris Green by midnight, Mr. DeVille loses another inmate billing day. Time's got to be tough if you're chasing down strays, Terrence. Well, every penny counts in New Orleans, miss. Lindsay Swan. I work for the DA. But you probably recognize my name from the Prison Reform Coalition. I helped write the class action lawsuit against you. Hi. Miss Swan, of course. I don't believe anything she said. But, uh, Chief Lewis said I wouldn't have any problem here. Am I going to have a problem here, Captain Membry? We got other leads we can follow. Good. Any way I can help, let me know. I've had suspects disappear on me. I've had witnesses refuse to talk, but I have never had a suspect yanked from me before I finish questioning him. DeVille's used to making the rules, not following them. Because he runs the parish jail? Who went and made him king? All right, let's stop focusing on his job and start to focus on ours. It's clear that Dunleavy was a mastermind of the breakout, right? So, Tim Dunleavy, who is he? His employment, well, he's got no employment record after he dropped out of Tulane Law School in 02. And his criminal record, well, he's got no criminal record until he was picked up in August 05 holding a bottle of beer outside a bar in the quarter. you telling me that Dunleavy got two years on a drunken disorderly? Well, this guy's doing time in OPP for spitting on the sidewalk. Felonies, misdemeanors, infractions, it doesn't matter. The city pays DeVille a per diem for every inmate. Before Katrina, he was raking in over a hundred grand a day. So it's to his advantage to jam as many people in there as possible. And trust me, you have no idea how bad it is in there. Money. They said that the money came from Tim. What did Leon tell you about the cash and the money belts? He said that he picked it up in stages, different drop locations around the city, but he never met the person who contacted him. Which means that Tim had somebody working with him from the outside. Green said Dunleavy's family was rich. Then that's the way we roll. Follow the money. Escaped? 
Escape from where? You didn't know your son had been in prison for the past two years. I don't understand how Tim was in prison and we didn't know. I mean, we're his family. Shouldn't we have been notified? Not unless he notified you. When's the last time you talked to your son? 2004, Christmas. Came down from college and uh, he was drunk, he was high, he was swearing. Some like... awful things were said by everyone. Yeah, well, I just wanted my son to have a good life. Is that such a crime? No, you wanted him to have your life. Tim had no interest in joining the family law firm. He was into music. As far as he got was a street performer at Jackson Square, playing for tourists. You know, I just don't believe him sitting in prison for two years not calling us for help. I mean, he's, he's stubborn, granted, but he's not that stubborn. I had trouble believing that myself, especially considering someone hooked your son up with over 100000 in cash. We set up a trust fund for Tim when he was a boy. He earned exclusive access to it when he turned 21. Yeah, it's the biggest mistake of my life. Do you have the name of the person who made the last withdrawal? Oh, better than that, we're downloading or uploading or whichever. They're sending a picture of her from the surveillance cam linked to the withdrawal she's made from Dunleavy's account using his password over the past three months. Did you say her? Uh, Kelly Vare, 30 years old. No priors. DMV has her address listed in Algiers. Looks like an apartment. We're sending units. What about a work address? Doesn't have one. Hasn't filed a W-2 in five years. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't work. Here she is. Run her name with City Hall. See if a Class C vending permit pops up. What's that? What? Just do it. And then fax a picture over to Cafe Du Monde at Jackson Square. Thanks, Earl. I think she's here, huh? She's got the permit. The non-declarable income. She's a street performer. Just like Tim doesn't leave it. You know, this is a real tight-knit community. Everybody knows everybody. Let's take a look. Silver bullet. You know this woman? Her name's Kelly. She works out here. Come on, cowboy. I know you see everybody out here, man. Nod yes or no. If you've seen her. So you're gonna put on a show, huh? That's what you wanna do? You wanna put on a show with me? All right. It'll be break yourself. Come on. Get your hands off me. I don't know right. nobody named Kelly. Kelly! Hold on, hold on. Get against the fence. Don't do move. anything. Put your hands behind your back. I didn't do anything! I know who you are. Your name's Kelly Vert, and you're friends with Tim Dunleavy. Turn around. Where is he? Where is he? I don't know. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Well, how do you think we got here, Kelly? We know you pulled the bag money for Tim's escape. Now, that makes you an accomplice to several felonies. Look. Look at me. We're not the bad guys. We just don't want anybody else to get hurt. If you tell me that Tim wouldn't hurt anybody, I'll believe you. Okay? I also know that he was in for a bogus charge. All right? <laughs> you think that's what this is about? Well, then tell me why he broke out of prison. Because he had to. Because his life was in danger. From what? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me because he said it would put my life in danger. But now you're in danger of going to the same place he just busted out of. All right, man, just ease up for a second, boy. Ease up. Cab. Yeah, we got Kelly Vert. What? What's wrong? Okay. Okay, we're coming in right now. Green and Amsing are dead. Killed by another inmate. Two hours after they were readmitted. You don't know that. Might just be a coincidence. <laughs> coincidence? There's no coincidence. He used us. Deville used us to catch those guys. In order to take them back to prison and kill them. He used us and he used you. You watch yourself, cop. Watch myself, cop. No, no, no. I blame myself. I should have seen it back in that parking structure when Carlson opened fire. He wasn't overzealous. 
He was shooting to kill Dunleavy. Hey, something's dirty going on here, Cap. Going on right in front of us. Both of you stop it. Your blood is up and so is mine, but let's talk reality here. If you're going to accuse the criminal sheriff of New Orleans with conspiracy to commit murder, you better be damn sure you're right. Our careers may not be important to you, but they are to me. This was a hit, Captain. Clear as day. Clear as day? Where's the clear as day motive? Cover up. Look, there's a secret inside that prison, and Chris Green knew what it was, and he was scared to say it in front of Deputy Carlson. He probably figured if he kept his mouth shut, they'd let him live. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't get you in that prison. You don't have to, Cap. The Ville let us in himself. He will? Yeah. Because we're going to round up his last missing prisoner. How can you be sure that no one's going to recognize you in there? This place isn't what it used to be. And I'm not the only one that washed away in the storm. I didn't make many friends inside Boulay. Just my cellmate, Sonny. And he's gone. All right, look what happened is my fault, and I take full responsibility for it. Look, Amzinger and Green were slotted to be in solitary confinement for their own protection, all right, because inmates hate escapees because everyone loses their privileges once an escape occurs. For Cyrus White, that meant missing out on his once a month visit with his mother. Now, what I should have done is clear the medical station and let Green receive his physical exam in private, but problem is, I didn't have any space to do it. Just like I didn't have anywhere else to put Ty Amzinger while his leg healed. See, most of my facilities are still down. Sir, we, we appreciate your honesty. But our problem is that you didn't give us a chance to interrogate these guys. Our profile on Dunleavy, it depended on it. Well, yeah, I know, and I'm sorry. All right, what can I do to make it up to you? If we're going to catch Dunleavy, we need to see how he escaped. So what are you suggesting? Well, there we retrace his footsteps. Take a look at everything leading up to the breakout. I don't know what you hope to get out of this. We already know how he escaped. We made damn sure that none of these other jokers could pull the same stunt. Open nine! Anyway, this is where Dunleavy would have started his day. We tossed it already. There's nothing here. Prodigal Blues. Doesn't leave you wrote music. But my guess is he wasn't allowed to play it now, was he? No OPP orchestra. No. Must have been frustrating. This is where he escaped from. Cell block still under repair. Water damage. What are we doing here? This is where it happened. Well, how did he escape from here? That uh, was my fault. It's a shortcut to the old parish prison yard. Dunleavy managed the library trailer. I let him cut through here from time to time under my escort and trusted him. That was my fault. So he jumped you? No, Ty Hamzinger did that. Put a shiv to my throat while Dunleavy told me I didn't open the east door for them. I'd never see my kids again. Should have known, though. They're not already animals. Once they get in here, it's just a matter of time before they turn. Sometimes I think the Christian thing to do is just put them all down. They let you live. Yeah. After they bashed me in the head once I unlocked the door for them. What if she's with somebody else, man? You think by carving her name into the wall, it's gonna stop anything? What was she on Tuesday, huh? Where? The woman missed one visit. It doesn't mean she's out banging the baseball team, Sonny. Please, don't flip it! Sonny, if you don't let go, you're gonna kill us both! You're pulling me down, ah. Sonny! Cobb. Hello. Cobb, this is Embry. 
I got Dunleavy on the line, and he'll only talk to you. I'm going to transfer you now. Keep him on the line as long as you can. What's going on, partner? Uh, that's my wife. She called the station looking for me. Handle that. Wife problems. Whole world stops. Yeah? He doesn't wear a ring. Like I said, wife problems. Just because you wear a ring don't mean you're protected from it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course you know what yeah. I'm saying. Now, what were you saying before that? Patching you through. Hello. Is this cop? How do you know my name? I heard your partner shout at the parking stretcher. Look, I know you arrested Kelly Vert. What? I said... Kelly has nothing to do with this, okay? Tim, listen, it's too late for that. We have proof that she pulled the money for you. Right now, she's sitting in a police holding cell, refusing to cooperate. It's quite the girl that you have there. She's not my girl. Just... Look, damn it. You gotta let her go. Tim, I can't. I'm trying to keep her there so that she doesn't end up where I'm standing right now. At OPP. Well, what are you doing there? What are you doing here? There ain't no ghost here. I'm trying to figure out what really happened here. Why don't you save me the trouble, Tim, and just tell me? Nothing happened there. Listen, hey, no Tim, I know you're scared, but Let you gotta sure trust that. me, okay? You're not listening to me. I said nothing happened there. What do you mean? How do I know I can trust you? Let's start with me saving your life, okay? Carlson tried to kill you in that structure. Come on, man, tell me. There ain't no ghost here! There ain't no ghost here! You all right? You okay? I don't care who started what. Last thing I need to see in my prison are cops fighting cops in front of the inmates. He ain't a cop. There's a lot I don't see in your prison, Mr. Dunnell. What are you talking about? I don't see how a federal felon like Ty Amsinger and two locals in on a misdemeanor can be in the same cell block at the same time. And I don't see a bruise on the back of Carlson's head like the one I just put on his eye. And I sure as hell don't see a shit mark on his throat. So you call me a liar? I'm calling you both liars! Nobody escaped from this prison. You shut my your mouth! They were on a work detail. Community labor. They were cleaning up trash near the marshland off airline highway. That's why Freddie picked them up on the other side of town. They were already over there. Why'd you lie? Because the truth was more dangerous. Public found out that they escaped while being supervised outside the prison. May have sparked a panic. Forced me to shut down the work release program altogether. And that would have hurt all of us. Because prison labor has been essential in rebuilding this city. So congratulations. You got me. Now get the hell out of my prison. You're no longer welcome guests here. Work on a chain gang? All the time. Any prisoner that can work must. You get paid though, right? Yeah, minimum wage. Then they take living expenses, travel expenses, payment of debts. Be lucky to get pennies on the dollar. Well, if DeVille sent the cleaning crew out here, he sure got what he paid for. There's no one searched that junk for months. So what were they really doing? Because hmm? prison labor ain't a secret worth killing for. Yeah, that ain't a secret at all. Timbre. Hey, Captain. Oh, hold on. Let me put you on speakerphone. I don't know where you guys are right now, but I just got off the phone with Chief Lewis, who specifically told me to take you two off the manhunt. Now, what the hell did you say to Terrence DeVille? Sounds like we said too much of the right thing. Apparently so. Well, I've been ordered to tell you two to go home, and I plan on doing that in how long? Two hours. All right, two hours. I'll call you to take you off this case. I took a souvenir from Tim, sir. Mm -hmm. What, it's music? Yeah, it ain't music. I ain't no pro, but I played trumpet in the marching band. And the 
clefs are all wrong. Uh, this is nonsense, man. If you tried to play these notes, it'd sound like chicken sex. <laughs> chicken sex? I'm not familiar with that sound. <laughs> it's not music. What is it? I have an idea. I need to sit down with a pen. To go to the bathroom. Oh, God. Guys, you got 10 minutes tops. I'm not getting suspended for you, Marlon. Ginger, you're forever in my heart. Oh, shut up. Let's have a seat. What's going on? <laughs> Pretty ingenious, you and your boy Tim. Working out a little code like this. Especially one that he could pass you through the mail right under the nose of the man who reads every letter. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. It ain't even that hard. Just running up and down the octaves, right? A through G. Half notes get you H through N, and quarter notes O through U. Come, you can make the whole alphabet with that. Now, I'm sure you've tossed or burned every letter he sent you with instructions on how to access his accounts and dropping the money off of Freddie. But this song right here, came from his cell. He didn't get a chance to mail it. I translated. You, you want to hear it? Escape tomorrow night. Call you from the road. And in case I die, I love you. Or in case I live. I talked to Tim. He called me. He asked me to let you go. Even now, he's trying to keep you out of danger. All I'm asking is that you do the same for him. That's it. If we don't find him, someone else will. And if they don't, then he's going to be running for the rest of his life. And trust me, that's its own kind of prison. Let us help him. Let us bring him in. You're going to have to give Chance a message from me. Who's Chance? Bartender. At the alibi. That was pretty good figuring out the music thing. Bugle boy. Bugle boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah playing in the marching band was the bomb, son. What did you do in high school? Well, I was on the team for that. Scoring touchdowns, buddy. What about the fellas? Bourbon. Double. And a uh, club soda with lime for Gail Sayers right there. Hey, Barty, are you chance? Kelly Burt says we can see Tim here. What, what did she say? Uh, Habadoosh? Habadoosh. Habadoosh. Storage room in the back. Mm -hmm. I'll go check it out myself. I don't want to spook him. You know where I'll be. Tim, Tim, wait a second, wait a second. I want to put the gun away, okay? Or we're just going to talk. How did you find me? Kelly, I'm here to help you. The way you helped Chris and Tyler? That was DeVille and you know it. I'm not on his side, I'm on your side, Tim. Everyone's on his side. How can you guarantee me my protection? He can't. No, no, don't! Oh, you're under risk of me. And you will not assist this fugitive in his escape. He ain't gonna let you kill him either. Now, it was bad enough if you've been shadowing me and my partner. 
Do you really have to point a gun at him? Drop it. You really need to work on your tailing skills. You lower your weapon. Lower yours. Drop your damn gun, you- Carlson, it's over! Drop your gun. You lost! Under, Drop your weapon, arrest. Carlson! Don't you're, leave it! Come here! Come here! Don't leave it! Go! Ah! Come here. Huh? Huh? I'm good, my best caught it. Go! Go get done, Lily. I've got this bitch. This is Boulay, FAS. I'm calling in a 1013 on myself at the alibi bar. Send everybody now! He was gonna kill me, Carlson. My partner just saved your life. Now you're gonna tell me what the hell's going on or I'm gonna kill you myself. You sure you wanna know? They'll come after you next. I'll blow your brains out. All right, oil. It's about oil and money, like always, okay? A corporation called Shore, maybe you heard of them? Yeah, when Shore drills for oil in the Gulf, it creates tons of toxic sludge. All right, the nearest legal dump site is 100 miles inland, but it costs big bucks to transport the stuff. So DeVille offered Shore a sweet deal. How about I send my workers, inmates who will keep their mouth shut, to pick up unmarked barrels at the port, truck them just three miles in, and dump them in the marsh. Just roll the barrels in, and let them sink. Shore Corporation saves millions, and DeVille gets a cut. And when I realized what we were doing, mm -hmm. I knew I would never leave that prison alive. But Chris and Tyler were the only ones I could convince of that. So we began to plot a way out. The plan was just to get far enough away and then write up what happened. You know, send it to the picky unions. The New York Times even. Stupid. Uh, I... Show me your hands. Take it. My truck is on Decatur and Esplanade, five blocks down the road. You head towards Algiers on the 428. There's no roadblocks. Leave it by the levee on the other side of the river. Now go on, get. Why are you doing this? I don't know. Maybe it's my purpose. And this is yours. Now go on, get, get out of here. Wait, if you talk to Kelly again, just tell her I should have kissed her when I had the chance. Tim, go, go. Anything else you'd like to add? No. This concludes the initial statement of Detective Trevor Cobb concerning the officer-related shooting of September the 29th, 2007. If he'd shot my partner, I would have done the same. We good here, Lindsay? Um, for now, yeah. Terrence DeVille's outside. He wants to talk to you. What? You can tell him to forget it. This matter is with my office Lindsay. now. We'll let him know when we want his statement. Lindsay, it's okay. No, Cobb, you don't have to talk to Lindsay. him. Lindsay. It was okay. Well, you, if you want to stop the conversation, just say the word, understand? I got it, I got it. You'll come back in here and kick his ass. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Yeah, well, I don't care what you told that little bitch of a DA. See, because here's a story as it will soon be known true. 
Two NOPD cops shot and wounded a brave deputy of the Corrections Department. And then they helped a desperate, dangerous fugitive go free. You're going down, son. Then you're going to come to my prison where we're going to continue this chat for a long, long time. It's not bad, Mr. DeVille. Not bad. But you might want to start dreaming up a better story. Because my friends and I, we're putting together a pretty good story of our own. Right out of the swamp. We trace that toxic crap in those barrels to Shore Company. You're still gonna need a better story. You can't prove anything. And in the case that your story involves a brave deputy who tragically got bumped off and blamed for everything, you should know Milo Carlson is recovering in a hospital room under 24-hour guard, courtesy of that NOPD. I wonder what story he's going to tell DeVille. You're no longer welcome here. This ain't over. Our old prison cell, man. It looks as crappy as ever. Your girl's initials are still on the wall. That's where you put them. They survived. I just thought you'd want to know that. Tell him you brought down the king of the prison? <laughs> yeah, he didn't believe me. He'll come around. Oh.